Many southern leaders back the call by the region's governors for a national conference. But is a national conference what Nigeria needs? Kidnappers of a deep alive pastor demand a 30 million naira ransom. And we'll review the papers this morning like we always do and tell you about two things that happened on this day years back. Welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I am Annette Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbonwa, bright and early on a Friday morning, back to work to, of course, uh, the whole of Nigeria. Lagos and Samui may not find that very funny this morning, but everybody needs to go back to work. Uh, it's no public holidays today. I have few people complaining. We've been working all week, all right, so you have no reason to complain. Welcome once again. We have a lot to share with you this morning. Numerous, um, you know, various conversations that we're going to be dealing with. But let's start with what's trending, first of all, across Nigeria today. Mm, what's trending? Oh, my. So we had David Dehi, an investigative reporter, uh, just a few days ago to talk about the story he did uh, regarding the, you know, um, Ino Bong Omoran story about how she went looking for a job and how she was raped and brutally murdered and buried in a shallow grave. So there's a response to that by the Akwa Ibom State government, Governor. He put out a statement through his lawyers demanding that David Udehi issues a retraction and an apology. That's because of how much, you know, that article implicated the, the, the Akwa Ibom State government and how later tweets he issued, you know, seemed to put a link between um, the first lady of the state, Ekaiti uh, Akpabio, and, you know, the hotel where um, a certain uh, you know civil servant in the Niger Delta civil service Kufri F. Young had you know gone to layers with the alleged murderer who is Odwak right now so it's just a lot here um, it's a it's a one two three a three page statement um, issued by the lawyers of you know um, Gotwila Pabio by Star Attorney Legal Services so they've given him 14 days to issue a retraction and apologize or you know, he'll be issued with a lawsuit. Um, oh, well, first of all, um, David Hunei has um, always shown to never be afraid of lawsuits, mm -hmm. um, mostly because of the confidence that he, um, you know, portrays and, of course, he puts out, um, you know, in uh, his personality and his work. So, you know, I, I'm not sure where this will go. Um, but, you know, does this really demand, you know, from, I mean, I read through the, you know, the follow-up to... Um, investigations on Inyo Bongo um, Umaran's death uh, and um, you know the statements and the parts where Gatsula Pabio and his wife were mentioned you know and I personally didn't see a lot you know that demanded you know any lawsuit or anything you know but if they you know felt um, um, angered by it then yeah it's their right to sue or to you know demand an apology um, he mentioned that Kufri F. Young um, is a you know member of the public service in you know in the state and also that one of the locations where it is very likely from their investigations, mm -hmm. from their tracking of his cell data and, and, uh, and the likes, yeah, that one of the places where he very likely had met with uh, the suspect, um, Udwak, yes. um, um, you know, is a hotel um, that is very likely owned by um, the wife of um, Godzulak Pabio. Um, so he, he doesn't necessarily, and if you read it very well, he doesn't necessarily say that, um, you know, Gazula Pabio or his wife are involved in any of this. You know, he really only just mentions that, you know, they're very likely the owners of that place from his investigations. And that, um, you know, you know, worst case scenario, which he tried to paint, is that there is a human, you know, body part uh, trafficking ring, you know, that the, you know, some people in the state are involved mm -hmm. with. And, um, you know, the another worst case scenario is that for a top government official like uh, Kufri F. Young, um, and of course where he resides, with places who have meetings and all of that, that is very likely that some of all those places are, you know, well, it's possible rather that some of all those places might be uh, connected with, you know, this worst case scenario, which is the, uh, you know, body um, um, parts trafficking or, you know, um, a ring. Um, so, you know, that's where, you know, the, that's where Gospel Pabio and his lawyers, you know, come in and they say that those insinuations, you know, those statements, those tweets mm -hmm. basically paint Gospel Pabio and his wife in, you know, in bad light and they demand an apology and all of that, um, which, you know, like I said, they have every right to. Um, but for me, um, I, I am personally thinking, you know, like David had said when we spoke with him, 
that these are some of the, the, the information that he has tweeted, the information that he has also put out, mm -hmm. is information that you expect from the police. A couple of days ago, there was an argument um, on social media uh, when someone was saying, oh, you know, you know, why should the police be giving a daily updates on the case? You know, why you know, are Nigerians demanding that the, the, the state government also gives a daily update on the case? You know, and I was saying that we're so used to mediocrity that we challenge anybody who demands accountability and demands, you know, a better system. Um, in a sane climb, a sane climb, you know, which I expect, the police and the government of the state will be on that case um, and not rest until every single, every tiny little detail of that case is exposed. And it's not because of the, you know, that you know, fear of, oh, you know, we don't want to put our sensitive information until we're sure. It's not that. If you see, you know, what happened with George Floyd, with uh, um, Anton Sterling, with you know, any of all the, you know, the Americans, black Americans who have been uh, murdered by the police um, in uh, police shootings and all of that, you would notice one thing, that every day the um, uh, head of police in that state or in that county always is addressing the press, giving daily updates of what's going on, who might be connected, where the investigations are going. There are parts that they wouldn't mention, obviously, because of um, um, uh, police you know, um, investigations still ongoing. But they know that they owe it to the public to address the public on every single detail of the, you know, I mean, as many of the details of the investigation that they can. They know that they owe it to the public. Another thing is, the information, like David mentioned, that he put out, is information that the police themselves should have sought. It didn't. We don't need to have a David Hundane to seek, you know, out information like that. We don't need a David Hundane to check who um, um, Akban. What was his name? Akban. Akban. The Akban guy, the yes. suspect. Yes. Um, we don't need, you know, David to do that investigation. It should be the police. The police in Akwa Ibom State's job to ensure that they check who he spoke with, to ensure that they reach out to the mobile telecom tele telecommunication companies to find out who might um, be connected with the case and not just you know, wrap it up and say, oh, the prime suspect has been caught, we're done, you know, you know, let everybody go home, you know, he will be prosecuted and all of that. It's their responsibility. And I mentioned it that day that in other murder cases, not other crimes that have com been committed in Nigeria, we've barely seen that there is other connections. We barely see that the police goes beyond what we can see and bring in other people that might be connected to the, uh, to the case. So if there truly is a possibility of human trafficking, the possibility of um, harvesting of um, organs in, in Akwa Ibom State, do we expect, did anybody expect that the, um, uh, the police in the state will go that length to ensure that they find out who we spoke with what happened in the hours before she died? What happens in the hours after she died and days after she died? Who else might be connected to him? We don't, we don't need David Uday. So it is their responsibility that he is carrying out. And, you know, this is what we're getting out of it. Sadly. And yeah, and really, um, I, I understand what you said because even here on Today in History, we've shared cases that happen, murder cases. 10, 20, 30 murders happening at different times in history, you know, in a place like America. And years later, the police is able to piece, you know, these murders together and say this murder was committed in 2010, 2011, 2012, but they were all committed by the same person. And it might take time, but they eventually produce the suspect or, yes. you know, whoever is guilty. And uh, just to quickly note that mo the majority of the, you know, accusation or the bone of contention with the Akwa Ibom State Government and David Udehi is basically from like tweets he put out after that article. So um, according to, you know, the message that uh, um, Godwin uh, Akwa lawyers wrote to David Udehi, I'm reading from that, he says, quote, um, this, it says, in one of your tweets via Twitter handle David Udehi on the 11th of May, 2021, you published the following statement to the entire world. And this is a tweet that um, David Dehi put out. He said, in other words, this place where Frank Uduak Akban, fresh from murdering Inu Moren, came to meet Kufre Efiong, belongs to the wife of Kufre's boss at Federal Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs, goes to the Pabu. So which politician has Kufre been running errands for? That's David Dehi there speaking. So the lawyers of Go to the Pabu here says, the implication of the above statements, which has enjoyed wide circulation, creates the impression that Senator Gautel Akpabu and his wife, Mrs. Ekaiti Akpabu, were not only complicit in the death of Inobongo Morin, but are also members of a syndicate specializing in the procurement, 
sale and use of human body parts for ritual. And two, that Davok Suites alleged to be owned by Mrs. Ikaiti Apabio, Senator Apabio's wife, you know, is used by members of this alleged syndicate, particularly Udrak Apan and Kufi Efyong, to carry out their you know, illicit transactions. He went on to say that Senator Pabu does not know and has never met um, this guy or never had any contract with this Kufi Efung, neither has, you know, the wife, that they've never had anything to do with them and they have nothing to do with the death of Inobong Umorin and that Davok suit is not the property of Mrs. Ekaiti Apabio. So he went on and on and on to say that if David Duden, he had done a quick search of the CAC Corporate Affairs Commission, they would have found out that that Davok suit is not a property of Mrs. Akaiti um, Akpabio, and neither is she a board or a director, and that they need to put out a retraction or, a or an, and an apology. And David Duden, he, he has replied on Twitter about four hours ago. He said, instead of sending old policemen to fight with me on TV or threatening me with lawsuits, just authorize Airtel and MTN to release the voice notes of the conversation between Frank Akbang and Kufre Efyong. Very simple, and this will end all the controversy. No need for plenty talk. And I went on to say the data is there. You know, so really, these are, these are things that are very important. And uh, I feel I understand where the governor is coming from. It feels like information of your character, how it seems that information seems to lead to you. You know, when, when David Duden asked, so which politician is he running errands for? And if he works with the government? And if this building, I, I don't know um, David Duden, his source, that made him conclude that Davok Street is owned by um, the first lady of Akwa Ibom State. I don't know where that's coming from. But if they're denying this, you know, I can understand where they're coming from to say, you say this building is mine, but it's not. You say, who's this policy? Who's he running errands for? When you're maybe to, um, referring to me, I can understand all that. But I feel that they should look at the bigger picture as to the fact that David Dunehi, a journalist here, who seem to have no ulterior motive but, but justice, right, and truth, is trying to get to the bottom of the matter. Who killed, you know, Inobong Umorin? And definitely, if he seems he's not acting alone, Udrak Frank, Udrak Akman, right? If he's not acting alone, who were the people who sent him? Who really is he running errands for? And These are the questions we need to ask. Yeah. Also very important, we know that in the article that David Dudehi put out, he talked about how um, this particular guy, Udra Kakban, uh, made a call to a certain blessing, Godwin, and um, it was a call that lasted just for a few seconds. Yes. And funny enough, a particular person named Blessing Godwin put out a statement on Facebook recently saying how she saw a job advertisement online, she applied for the job, um, this person named Ezekiel called her, but did not call her anymore. And she put two and two together, just the time, timeline of the, of the information, and reached the conclusion that possibly why, you know, she could not reach the guy anymore was when the murder and rape of Inobongomora was taking place. It all just falls into place. And I yeah. feel the police can't pick up on all this information. The government should be able to dig deeper beyond the surface. If we're seeing books of, of people, you know, sandals of students going, dating back to the year 2013, 2015, this is beyond Inobongomora. This is, you know, has to do with the lives of thousands of that been exaggeration, at least tens and tens of Nigerians, especially women and you know girls, that were missing or that have been murdered. Their murder should be investigated. Absolutely. The police should get to the bottom of this. And, you know, like this lady said, this uh, certain um, blessed Godwin, she mentioned that if you know they, they had been able to establish connection and she went for this purported interview, you know she would have been in in her shoes. I mean, this is blessed Godwin. I'm reading from her statement. She says. Um, Maybe it would have been justice for any and justice for blessing. How will my parents take the news? He, she went on to say, then I imagined if he had succeeded in raping and killing any without her friend, remember any's friend raised the alarm yes. in Lagos, without the friend raising the alarm and his evil being exposed, I would certainly have been the next victim. And she went on to say, oh, thank God that she was spared. So it's, it's really deeper than Inobong Morin, and, and uh, the police should do more. Yeah, once again, and that's where I was going. You know, this, you know, normally should not be solely David's responsibility to unravel all these things or to look into these aspects of the, you know, this conversation and this murder. Um, it should be the Nigerian police. They should be the ones asking these questions. They should be the ones seeking these answers. It shouldn't just end with one person being, you know, arrested and that's it. 
Um, you know, does he make confessional statements? Are they working on the statement that he's making? Are they seeking um, information from uh, these uh, telecommunications companies that you know that David mentioned? Uh, is there going to be you know a request that we hear the phone uh, conversations between David? Not David now. Um, um, Akban and uh, Kufri. Yes, Kufri yes. Um, they, you know, th these are the questions that they should ask. And of course, like you've mentioned, the crime scene, which has of obviously been, been contaminated, contaminated yes. um, should the the um, police be looking deeper into other you know people that may have been declared missing many years ago, months ago, um, that have not been found? Do they have any evidence of anybody, um, any of these people that may have gone into that um, um, location? They are important questions. Godfrey Lakpabi, once again, is Senate um, t um, Minister of um, uh, Nigeria's Affairs, not, no longer governor, um, um, has a right to ask, the, you know, to defend himself and to speak out with mm -hmm. regards where his name has been mentioned. But I personally don't see it as roping him in. Anybody, any hotel can be used, any location can be used. Yes. Um, and um, any name can be mentioned. But once again, he does have a right to demand an apology and a retraction. I, I, and I think another another much bigger issue really is the, the issue of press freedom in Nigeria. Really, do we do we have a free press? Can I carry out an investigation and sleep with my eyes closed and not be worried that the people who have been implicated and my report shows that indeed they were involved would not come after me in the dead of the night. Oh. Can I carry out investigations and not? I have friends who are investigative journalists who, they t you can call them paranoid but they take extra extra care because of their movement because you know documentaries they've produced or investigative reports they've put out have led to lots of people getting in jail for crimes they've committed so this issue of press freedom in nigeria can you really can we do we really have a free press in nigeria well, uh, take you a, know it's just it's just uh, such a sad reality most of the people who have been able to freely put out you know these type of investigative reports you know have you have to had to do it outside nigeria they would um, obviously, you know, is no longer in Nigeria, and that's why it's free to express all of this. Um, look at what happened with the Kano State uh, government's investigation. The journalist, you know, went through hell after he put out, um, you know, uh, information on corruption in uh, Kano State back then. Anyway, we're out of time for this. Um, there's also a conversation on the uh, son-in-law to President Mohamed Bouhari, who's been accused of a 31 billion naira fraud, but um, we probably would chip that in a lot later. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're moving to Off the Press. What are the big stories making headlines across Nigeria today? We'll share them with you.